Paul says, we proclaim him, admonishing every man, teaching every man that we may present every man complete in Christ. That's what God's doing. God is so committed to making you complete and mature and to be exactly what God wants you to be that He will stop at nothing to change your life, nothing to purify your life, nothing to get sin over your life. So don't be ashamed of suffering in suffering. But see God's purifying method in it. Rejoice in God. Don't be, don't be startled or, or surprised. Don't see punishment and suffering. See it as a blessing. All of these things go. And then he goes and he talks about if, and if, if it begins with us, what will, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel? In other words, if judgment, if, if the sufferings for Christians are difficult, guess what? Those of you who do not obey the gospel, it's going to be worse. It's going to be far worse. He goes on in verse 18 and says, And if the righteous are scarcely saved, it doesn't mean that they're barely saved, but they're, they're scarcely saved because it comes with difficulties. You could translate this as, The righteousness is saved with troubles. What will become of the ungodly and the sinner who are not saved and will endure greater suffering? It's almost like a Pascal wager that says, hey, listen to this. There's, there's suffering in the Christian life, but there's more suffering in the non-Christian life. There's going to be greater suffering if you reject God. There's going to be greater punishment in your life if you reject God. God will punish sin. Right. And finally, in verse 19, listen to what he says. Get fit by not demanding your entitlements, but by trusting God's sovereign plan in your life. God has a plan. Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. Here's that last indicative or command. Entrust your souls to their creator. The faithful creator. The idea, entrust your souls to, a, to God who is in control of all things and nothing comes to you unless it passes through God's hands. Amen. It all does that. You could be having a pity party, but that difficulty in your life has passed through God's hands. And the question is, do you trust God? Do you trust God is bigger than your, quote, problems? Do you trust God is bigger than any suffering? And how much suffering can a Christian endure before they break down and shout at God? If you get fit, if you get fit, by rejoicing instead of being surprised, by seeing yourself as being blessed instead of being punished, by seeing that the suffering is the evidences of God's grace in your life rather than seeing them uh, being ashamed of it, and, and seeing that, 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 that suffering is not apart from God's sovereign plan for your life. You can be fit. You'll, you'll do the things that God says you need to do in this life and overcome those things and you will not break down. Amen. You will not shout at God because you'll see God as your friend. Yes. Do you see God as your friend this morning? Do you see God as one who cares, loves, encourages, and does all things that are good in your life? Everything in your life that is good comes from God. This week, 
I believe it was the Baltimore Oriole game. There was an umpire, and I, 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 have, I have special, how would I say, empathy for this umpire. Let me, let me tell you why. First. The first time I umpired a AAA baseball game this year, I made a terrible call. And I wanted to try to reverse it. Because I called a person safe when they were out. I went to the home plate umpire, he says, no, don't, don't change it. Just, we'll, we'll live with it. This week, and, and so I felt bad the whole game. You know, I just really felt bad because I just wanted to get out of there. You know, I, I, I made a bad call, okay? This week, I believe it was the Baltimore Oil game, that they were, they were, they were the, the pitcher was throwing a perfect game. They were, you know what a perfect game is in baseball? It's where, it's where you get 27 people up, 27 people down. No walks. No hits. It was the ninth inning. It was the 27th batter. The ball was hit to, I believe it was to second base. If I'm, no, it was, the first, it was hit towards second base, but the first baseman got it, threw it to the pitcher, the pitcher stepped in the bag before the runner came, and normally that's out, but the umpire went safe and blew a perfect game. And after the game, and after looking at the tape, he broke down, the umpire did. He was so, uh, how would I say, overcome with grief. He didn't know what to do. He talked to the guy, and, and everybody had been gracious to him, but, but it's difficult. It, it, is, it is really difficult. To, to get out of this idea of being a pity party because you have made wrong calls with your life. And those wrong calls, the Bible says, deserve God's judgment upon your life. We're going to take the Lord's Supper in just a few minutes. But what I want you to consider as we take the Lord's Supper is that the only reason why you can be acceptable before God is not to bring something you have done to God to make you acceptable, but because of what God did 2,000 years ago on a cross that was historically verified and dying for sinners like you. When you take the Lord's Supper this morning, don't be ashamed of the difficulties in your life because you're a Christian. Don't be surprised that difficulties are going to happen. Get fit. Get spiritually fit because there's going to come a day when you are going, if, you, if you're not suffering now or having difficulties now, there will be a day, won't there? There will be a day. John Wooden in his Pyramid of Success in the top part of the pyramid said this, Competitive greatness is this. Perform at your best when your best is required. And then he says, and your best is required every day. If I, if I would uh, kind of sum, sum that up, I would say, listen, get fit every day. Get fit, spiritually fit, because fitness spiritually is required every single day of your life. Look at these verses. Don't be surprised. Rejoice. Don't be ashamed. Entrust your soul to God. And the only way you can do that this morning is to trust in the cross of Jesus Christ. It's the only payment that is out there for sin. That umpire can get forgiveness because people will grant forgiveness of other people, but God requires justice because He is a holy God and required the death of someone. And that is why He sent His Son. So as we come to the table this morning, I hope you get spiritually fit. I hope that you're not one of the people that has a pity party, and I hope you're not one of the people that, that suffers so much that you break down. But if that's you this morning, and you're broken down,
come to this table, ask forgiveness, submit your life and entrust your life to the Creator God who bought your redemption at His cross. Let me pray.